Hey guys, thanks for checking the video out. Today I want to take a look at Logic Pro Track Stack. Now, there are two ways that we can do this. We can create two different kinds of track stacks. We can create a folder stack or we can create a summing stack. But what's the difference between the two and when should you use one over the other? Well, they each have their own kind of uses and their own little quirks. So let's check it out and see when you would use a folder and when you might use a summing stack. So here's an example of when I would probably use a summing stack. I've got eight guitars here and they're really not playing many parts. It's down to me. There was a chord change in there between chords one and two that I just couldn't quite get right. So I had to do it on two different channels. Just take a listen to this guitar part. Okay, so a guitar part there. You'll see on these tracks that they are actually already bussed. So they're going to bus 18, and bus 18 is called intro guitar. So these are all going to the same place. Every single one of those is going to this intro guitar bus. Let's take a look at what happens when we create these as a stack. So I'm gonna select the top one and then select the bottom one. And I'm just gonna go create stack. Now the shortcut is Shift, Command, and D. If I want to create a folder stack, then it tells you here the details. A basic stack that allows you to mute, solo, and basically level stuff, but it just creates a folder on the arrange window. So the folder stack is really just a space saver. You've got then a volume fader for everything within that stack, but essentially it just saves space within your arrange window. When you've got eight tracks that are essentially just doing the job of kind of one guitar part or two guitar parts, it's handy to be able to do that. But the summing stack, this is the one we're going to take a look at now. You can also record into this by just hitting record on the track stack, and then you can add effects on. And that's the main one, really. You can add compression, EQ, whatever, to all these tracks as one. It's essentially creating a bus. And with that, it's rerouting all these tracks within this stack into this bus. And that's why it's important that I told you where those tracks were going. So you can see these are still going to bus 18. So you've got guitar intro eight going to bus 18, and that's intro guitar. When I click on create, it's actually created that bus for me, but it's renamed the stack intro guitar. So instead of me having to go into the mixer and create that track for the bus and bring it into the mixer, whatever, it's actually just created it for me. So it knows that they're all going to one bus, it knows what the bus is called, and it's just renamed that track stack for me, which is pretty helpful. So you can see here, this is called intro guitar, this is the summing stack, it's retained the input, bus 18, so these are all going out of bus 18, and it's kept that all intact. It's a really nice streamlined way of making a bus and making sure that stack keeps everything in play, keeps everything nice and contained in the same way as a folder does. But crucially, it's going to change the routing and allow you to put effect on that bus. Let's take a look at the folder stack then because this does things slightly differently. Let's do it on something different. Let's go for um, these verse guitars. So you'll see that these verse guitars are just on the stereo output. If I just change the routing for this for a second, let's go to bus 16, whatever, or 9, doesn't matter. Let's then control click and go create track stack. And let's go for a folder stack and then go create. Now, within that stack, these are still going to bus 16. There's nothing changed there, but the actual folder track, you can't put any effects on it. You can't do anything like that. It's merely a volume fader. So this just allows you to collapse the tracks in the same way as the summing track did. But you can see there are a couple of more options on the summing version. So you can record into it, record enable, input monitor, etc. You can do panning, which you can't do on the, the traditional kind of folder stack. So the folder has far fewer options. You can't do, you can't kind of record into it by just selecting the bus. You can't do any panning. You can't do any EQ, compression, whatever. You have to do that on the track level. You can't use it as a bus. It's merely a volume up or down and an organizational thing. On the summing stack, you have far more possibilities. You can add effects, you can add bus sends, whatever you want. And it's gonna change the routing so that all the tracks are then routed to that summing stack. A folder doesn't change the routing, but a summing stack does. 
So a few differences there. And you can kind of imagine where you might need to use some of these. If you've got like a multi mic drum kit, then that would be a good candidate to use a summing stack because then you can apply compression EQ to that drum kit as one. If you've got, for example, a load of takes that you just want to keep as separate tracks so you can choose bits out of, whatever it is, you've got a load of different versions of something that you don't necessarily want to listen to all at the same time. You don't want to put them all into one place and then apply anything on a bus level. Then a folder track might be worthwhile there. You can still save space in your arrange window, you just can't add any effects, but you might not need to. Hopefully that's given you an idea of the two different types of stacks, the differences of the two, and when you can use one as opposed to the other. I'll see you again soon. Take care.